All right, what is up everybody? How are you doing? Hope you're doing great. Um, I'm gonna kind of skip the goofy intro. We're gonna cut right to it because I think I think this video is important and it's something I wanted to talk about for a little bit. So in this video, we're gonna go through 12 hacks as we call them, but they're more just like things you can do in Premiere Pro, tips, tricks, whatever you wanna call it, that I think will help speed up your workflow. Some of them you might have known of, some of them you might have not, so I'll try to keep it short, keep it punchy, and yeah, try to get through all 12 and see, uh, see which ones you knew and which ones you didn't. Comment below um, if any of these are groundbreaking to you or if you're like Niles. <laughs> Everyone knows these. Also, it's probably important to say that I'm not gonna dive super deep into every little thing about these tips. This is more of just like, I mean, they're not that complicated, but this is more of just like a let you know what they are, how they work, how to use them, and then you can explore a little further. Just wanted to say that as I'm kind of just. The first tip is synchronize. Now, if you have a audio track that you are trying to match with a video track, then you basically you just use synchronize and it'll automatically match those up. Now a few things here are you need to make sure both files have an audio file. So if you were to match up like a screen recording with a main camera angle like this, you could use synchronize to quickly do that. The second is quick titles. A lot of people go up to file new legacy title and they have this whole other window, but there's actually a much faster way to do quick titles. And for YouTube, I think speed is essential. You see Kearns do this a lot with like his tips and his LOLs and his, all his text. So yeah, pretty nice, pretty easy. Maybe you didn't know about it, maybe you did. All right, the next is the, what the up down keys do. If you are trying to quickly navigate through your timeline, you can hit up and down to quickly scroll through. And it'll basically, whatever track you have highlighted, it'll basically bounce to the next cut. This is super helpful if you're trying to blast around um, and you just don't wanna drag all the time. Um, I find this super useful. Again, just something that speeds you up. The next is simple paramatic EQ. This one's a little more nitty gritty, but basically if you have a voiceover track and then a music track, you don't want those to be fighting each other. You don't want you know, there to be like a war for what you hear. You want your voiceover to be nice, clear, very audible, and then your music track just to kind of add some atmosphere to it. So what you do is you go to simple paramatic EQ, drag that on, and then you are gonna play with these settings. The one that we always go for is 1250, four, and then negative eight, but you can kind of change this. So 1250 and four are kind of what I always do, but then I will change uh, the decibel level. Um, and this just kind of creates a nice notch for the voiceover to live over your, over your music track. Um, you can still play with the audio on the music track directly, but yeah, that's just super helpful. We do this for almost every video. Five, okay, this one's kind of basic, but you can make your own keyboard shortcuts. I feel like a lot of people are, always confused about shortcuts or a little intimidated. If you don't like the Premiere Pro shortcuts, then you can just make your own. This is also helpful if you just wanna see what the shortcuts are. All you're gonna do is go up to the little Premiere Pro header, click that, you'll see a toggle, keyboard shortcuts, and there they are. The next is this tilde key in the upper left of your keyboard. I actually don't know if it's called a tilde, but it's basically this key right here. I'm gonna obviously show footage of it. And basically if you hit that, it'll send whatever monitor you're in into full screen. If you hit control in that tilde, it sends your footage into complete full screen. So if you were to like show a friend, hey, come check out this edit, control, tilde, boom, it's full screen. All right, we're halfway through. All right, the next shortcut, this one I don't use as much, but it's pretty cool, is basically you can uh, take a clip from your project file, drop it over a clip in your timeline, and it directly replaces it. So what you do is you just hit option, drag, and you put that bad boy right over whatever clip on your timeline you wanna replace. Um, a lot of times you find yourself opening that clip in and out, deleting the other one, and it just takes a second. So this is a much faster way to do that. The seventh tip, trick, hack, whatever, is very similar. Basically, if you wanna duplicate something on your timeline, you're basically just gonna hold option, click, drag it, do not let go of option, 
and then release it on your mouse and you will basically duplicate whatever thing you selected. I use this a lot for sound effects and for adjustment layers. So a lot of times I color with adjustment layers. So basically what I'll do is if I wanna just duplicate that color and then change it a little bit, then I basically will just option, click, drag, release, and then I've duplicated whatever I had highlighted. All right, nine, a quick one, snapping, the snap tool. This is something that every, you have to turn this on. If it's ever off, you'll immediately know after you use it because snapping is just so nice. Basically, snapping is this little magnet in the top left of your timeline. You toggle it with the S, and basically that just means whenever you're dragging clips together, they just automatically snap. If you don't have that on, Basically, it's just the computer knowing where it wants you to put your clip, and it just kind of guesses. It just, you move it 90%, it finalizes the last 10. If you don't have this on, you can end up like cutting parts of your other clip that you don't want to, um, and this just kind of makes it more precise. Whew, I'm like getting tired of talking. Okay, 10, this is all about color labeling. So if you do not label your footage in your timeline and everything is iris, I, you just you just need to stop. You need to color label the stuff in your timeline. Basically, you can choose whatever colors you want, but basically I always keep B-roll iris. I keep my talking head and VO stuff rose colored. I keep my sound effects cerulean, so kind of green, and then I keep my music mango. So that just lets me know where stuff is in my timeline and not, be if everything's iris, you just don't know like, oh, is that an adjustment layer? Is that a clip? What clip is that? Is, was that talking head? Is it B-roll? Sometimes I'll even label my real-time B-roll and then my slow-mo B-roll. This is a major workflow hack. Please apply it. You'll thank me later. All right, the next little hack, which I think you know, is Command Shift D. And that basically, what that does is it just creates uh, a fade between your clips. Now, something you probably didn't know is that you can actually adjust the length of this. So the stock Adobe length uh, is sometimes too long. It's too much bleed. Basically, you can change the length of it and make it shorter, and then you can just Command Shift D to then place crossfades on everything. And a lot of times, the reason you're doing that is not because you want the audio to fade, you just don't want any audio pops. So you can actually, if you keep it really short, you can just select all and then Command Shift D and it'll put one of those little fades at the end of every clip. Pretty cool. All right, the next tip, last one, 12, are the Q and W keys. And this is just a really good way to quick cut. Basically, wherever your cursor is, it cuts and then it'll bring your clips over to where that was. Pretty easy, pretty simple, but again, just a workflow hack. It's all about going faster, being more efficient, and getting better. Because then if you're not as worried about like how much things, how much time takes, you can put more time into your edit, put more effort in, and not be stressed that your workflow is garbage and takes you forever. All right, everyone, so I try to keep it as quick as possible. Sorry, the video is probably still kind of long. I don't know though, because I haven't edited it. But thank you for watching, and yeah, stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.